What's up, people? I am back. This is attempt number two. I tried to do this video on Friday, but it didn't go through, so I'm going to try it again. But I am finally going to review Halloween Kills. Um, it came out this past weekend. I watched it twice now. I watched it once on Peacock. And then I went to go see it in the theater the next day. A friend took me. So, what do I think of it? I love it. I mean, the second time, I love it much more. I definitely need to watch it again to give it, like, one more watch. And the other planned videos are tomorrow. I will be doing two videos. I got one will be Jet Li's Fearless Review. I'll probably do that later in the day, though. And then early in the day, I'll do um, my updated Halloween franchise ranking, you know, including kills. So that'll be tomorrow. And then I'll review Jet Li's Fearless because, you know, I've been on Jet Li Kick lately. So, we'll do that tomorrow. But, back to this movie. I really love it. I, I think, you know, there are things I don't like. Minor things. But I think overall I love it. I think this is one of the best Halloweens in a while. I love 2018, but I personally think this film is better. I think there's a lot, a lot of good character moments in it. I think the ending is good. Though I do prefer... The leaked ending, which I guess we could talk about now, because it's the film's out. Karen dies, and both in in they assuming I think they changed it in the the app in the version we got, but in the other one she dies because like she's on the phone with Lori and then Michael kills her. I would have still preferred that ending, and I just think that's executed a bit better. But I do like this ending, but I think I, this movie made me like characters like Allison. You know, I had my issues with her in 2018, same with Karen. So this film definitely made me like them, those characters. They did a lot more of Cameron in this. Tommy was great in this. Some really good scenes. Like his scene with Lori when he was like, you protected me, now I'm going to protect you. Or it was like 40 years ago, you protected me, now I'm going to protect you. I'm like, God damn, that's such a good scene. Um, Michael is a fucking monster. This this film solidified that James Jude Courtney is my favorite Myers. I love Nick Castle, but man, N James Jude Courtney has made Michael like Michael was fucking not just scary, but the way he would like dis you know display the bodies afterwards, the way like a lot of the kills were super creative, and like I said, this movie lives up to its title, Halloween Kills. It, it lives up to its fucking title. The gore is there. Um, the music is awesome. I think they continue the tradition of that epic music, you know, we got in 2018. So this is definitely one of the best Halloweens in a while. It's like, I love it. So we're going to get started now on the story. Out of 10, I'd give it a 9. I'm like 8.5 to 9. You know, if you put one kind of criticism in there, you can maybe push it down to an 8.5. But I think I overall like it. And I think some people are being overly critical, like, oh, because if you guys got to understand, I'm not, Halloween, yes, isn't Friday the 13th, you do have strong characters, but I feel like you got that in this. I don't think you should need to be looking at Halloween like we look at, we criticize like it's some artsy movie. No, it is a, a slasher film at the end of the day. I'm not saying that makes it exempt from criticism, I'm not saying... I want Halloween to be like Friday the 13th, where it's just mindless killing, which I'm cool with that in Friday, not in Halloween, but I don't think we did get that in this. I thought we had some nice character moments, and we got that. So, I'm going to cheers to open the video. So, <laughs> we start off, <coughs> we kick off with Cameron, <coughs> trying to call his friend Oscar, who... We get a shot of him, um, you know, impaled on the gate, which I'll admit that <coughs> I do wish we saw it, though. And that's another thing. The kills in this, we get a nice mix of on and off screen kills. So <coughs> Cameron tries to, to call Oscar and he does obviously doesn't pick up because he's dead. <coughs> Sees. Um. He's a Hawkins body. <coughs> it turns out he's still alive. So Cameron's calling for help for him. Then we get the 
a quick flashback, which we shows us obviously the flashback from 1978. That's all we you know we've been talking about. I thought they did a really good job of capturing like made it seem like it's 1978, and even the like filter they shot it in, it looks like almost like a similar filter to the original. You know, there's a scene where the officer and Hawkins go in Meyer's house and they see the body of the dog, which, you know, they mentioned back in the first one. I think they did a good job of, like, matching it mostly. And obviously the mask really looks like the the Shatner mask from the original. So I think they did a really good job with that. It was really quick. It was like, I didn't realize, I thought it was, it was longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought the flashback was maybe going to be like 5 to 10. It was like almost 15, I think. It was like 15. It was a while. So, um, Michael grabs the officer. Hawkins runs in, has the gun, but he accidentally shoots his partner. Not Michael, and Michael walks out. This is where we get the Loomis cameo, which was beautiful. Seeing it on the big screen. Like, that shot of him when he walks through the door asking Hawk, asking Hawkins, did he kill again? That shot of him, like, oh my god, that looks like Donald fucking Pleasance. Like, I think that was like a deep fake or prosthetics. Because then we do get a close shot of the guy's face. He really pulled off Loomis. The voice, that's whatever. Like, at the end of the day, no, you can't, you can't recreate Donald Pleasance's voice. It's just, you can't. Like, even in, like, the other versions. Like, in 2018, you remember you have the words of Loomis. And I think even, like... H2O, like, something similar with Ed Loomis had words. None of them sounded like Donald Pleasance. That's just, you're not going to recreate that voice. But So I think they did a close enough job. Then we get, like, a callback to the first movie after, you know, Myers kills his sister. The big, you know, flat fall back shot. Broad shot. Where it's, like, Myers standing there with, like, the cops on the guns. And then we kind of get the iconic opening with the pumpkins. I thought they did a really good job. I like how creative they're getting with the opening, with the like the flaming pumpkin. Then we're reintroduced to Tommy, um, and that black family we saw in twenty eighteen. They're at a bar. We we reintroduced to Lonnie. This is how Tommy's introduced. And when Tommy was talking about what happened to him, I thought that scene was really good. I thought Anthony Bryan Hall, he really almost played Tommy like intense. Like Tommy felt intense, and it really does make it realistic because it's like Michael really fucked this kid up man like so he talks about like what Myers did to him and we get like when we're reintroduced to Lindsay Marion and Lonnie they show like the like the flash we get some shots from the first one you know I thought that was good then um while this is happening Myers um when he mentions Lori we, we cut to Lori being taken to the hospital She's bleeding. She, yeah, there's a lot of blood in this movie. Especially in this beginning part. Like, they're all just fucking covered in blood. Like, everybody. Then we see the the firefighters go in the house. This scene was badass, even though we saw it in the trailer. Myers. We saw that Myers was hiding in the gun rack where Lori brought up the guns in 2018. So that's how he avoided getting really burned. I thought that was fucking cool. That was such a good way to introduce Myers in this movie. The guy falls through the floor. Then the fucking thing raises. Myers just walks out. Kills him. Pulls another firefighter. And then we get that shot we saw in the trailer. I don't care if we saw it in the trailer or not. But that shot of him walking out of the house with the fucking weapon. In it, that might be my favorite Myers shot. Just ever. Just the imagery. The flaming house. Myers just standing there fucking kills all the uh, the firefighters and leaves one little bit alive to see like his brothers just fucking dying that's going to be a, a, a thing you're going to see a few times in this movie Myers doesn't just kill you straight up like I really like that We're, I mean, I'll get to that in, the, in another scene but Myers just leaves you a little bit alive so you can see your fucking brother just getting like this firefighter is basically watching his brothers just getting murdered and the, the saw was cool. Lori's brought to the hospital. Then, um, I think after that, yeah. Then we're, we see this, uh, we pretty much the, the, the kills we saw in the trailer. This old guy and this um, woman are at this house. Things seem chill. And it was kind of a funny way to introduce them. Was the ladies using a, um, a, a drone, which is kind of funny. Then Myers, um... Breaks the drone. 
attacks the old man. And the scene where he just grabs the old man through the glass and just yanks his neck through, like, the one shard. is like, oh, my God. And then Myers, uh, this is where we get the, uh, the fucking, the tube, the light tube. Oh, my God. The trailer, like, shows you it, him stabbing her, but they don't show you that he holds it in her throat for, like, a good minute. Like, and then it, she's still alive. So she's just bleeding out, grabs her husband, stabs him, grabs another knife, stabs him again. Like, he does it, like, two or three times. It's like, holy fuck. And it's tragic because this lady's watching her husband die. She's slowly bleeding out. But that's what makes Myers, like, kind of scary in this. Kind of compared to the other ones where he's not just killing, like, he, he doesn't just straight up kill you. Like, some of the other ones, you get stabbed, you're kind of dead immediately. In this, no, you're bleeding out. And the, it's almost, like, fucking eerie how he's just basically making her watch her husband just get stabbed, like, a million fucking times. Ugh, just goddamn. Then he walks out. Then we kind of cut back to Tommy, the black family. Turns out, a lot of people thought they were um, the kid, the black kid's parents from the last film. No, uh, they're not. They just know him from across the street. I was in that camp, too. They noticed that. Then they, because the news start kind of going everywhere. Michael Myers is alive. They get in their car. But... They also forget that they kind of mention that there's another patient who was along with Myers in the being transported escape too. He's the one who actually gets up, gets up that you think is Myers, but it's not. Then they rally um, the town. Tommy tries to rally a group. The patient drives off. Then we cut to Lori. We get this really good scene of Allison explaining what happened, because officers are basically have to now tell Lori. Well, before that, we get a cool shot of, like, the officers responding, oh, shit, Myers is alive. Like, like, they realize, so they tell Allison and Karen, like, in Allison and Karen's interrogation is different, because Allison actually tells the truth that, yeah, it was Sartain who brought Myers to us, not Myers found the house, and that's what Karen thinks. And when Karen obviously finds out Michael's alive, she thinks, oh shit, okay, he's coming here. But Allison doesn't believe that. And then she meets up with Cameron. He he offers, like, my dad, mentions that his dad, Tommy, are all gonna lead, like, this, like, basically, like, group to try to kill Michael. Allison agrees to go with him. She kind of, suppose, initially, Karen has her stay with Lori, but then she runs off. Then, I think the next kill, we're introduced to Little John and Big John, the gay couple who actually are living in the Myers house. I thought they were funny. I'll admit, I was cringing, not because they're gay. I mentioned this a few times. I don't care that they're gay. It's not, they're, that, that's not my problem. I thought, because the guy, the one guy, the guy who plays Little John, I know him as, you might, if you watch Mad TV, he's Stuart. I thought he was going to be like the cringe humor of the movie. I thought when he showed, like, oh, God, they're going to be, like, the cringy humor. Not really. Initially, you know, there's, like, a scene where they scare off some kids. Then, then they, you know, they come back later. So. So we're introduced to them. Then Tommy comes to pick up. Allison, Tommy starts rallying the town after this is kind of we get a quick sequence of that while this happens Lindsay in another car with the black family and then Marion all go see the kids this is the stuff we saw in the last trailer the same kids that were fucking with the little John and Big John they run off because they notice Michael's there Michael kills uh, this whole sequence was fucking brutal I can understand some people saying that Marion should have maybe died a bit better, but you guys gotta remember, she died, like, in the opening of H2O, and I always suspected she was gonna die anyway. I, I, hold on, you just gotta walk on going. Okay. But, yeah. I always figured... 
I always figured Karen was gonna die pretty quick. Like, I mean, Marion was gonna. I didn't think she was gonna die that quick. And she, I maybe she could have died a more brutal death so she can have a better going out than just you kind of see her get stabbed. Then the black guy gets stabbed. The the dude who gets stabbed, that was brutal. He gets stabbed in the fucking eye. And then kills the the girl in a kind of a funny way. She has like a gun. She's shooting him. He kick Michael kicks the door. And she into her hand and he, she shoots herself, which is pretty funny. Lindsay tries to fight Michael, doesn't work. We get a kind of a really good chase scene, which I think I like 2018, but the one thing I really thought 2018 lacked was a big chase scene. And Halloween, in my view, really any slasher, but definitely Halloween especially. You need a big chase scene. And I feel like 2018, the only one you had was Allison, and that was like two seconds. This chase lasts for not not too long, but it goes. And I thought it was really good. It was lit well, because there was moments Michael just almost like walked in complete darkness. You can kind of see the white of his mask. Myers just looked badass in this, with like the some of his mask being burned and shit. So, um, Lindsay manages to evade Michael. Then Karen realizes Allison's gone. Then this is where they bring in, um, uh, Hawkins, who I really like that they kept him alive, because I think it should, they should have had it, I would have, I don't really like how they had the doctor be the one to have him incapacitated, it should have been Michael, it would have made way more sense, but it was, it's cool that they kept him alive, and there's a scene with him and Lori, is so fucking good where, you know, obviously Lori at this point still thinks Michael is dead, because Karen even uh, she knows, but she's acting like he's still alive. Um, they have a really good, genuine scene between Lori and, you know, Lori and uh, Hawkins. And there's another one later on. But then Tommy obviously comes back. There's a scene Lonnie um, talks about her dad, Allison's dad, which I really like, because I thought 2018 didn't acknowledge it, but I understand it. In the moment, Allison and Karen are being chased by Michael Myers, so they're not thinking about her husband, but I do like that they bring it up. Like, there's even a scene where Karen's, like, crying, you know, and they have a moment between Karen and Allison talking about, you know, Ray, who, who was her dad in the last movie. They have a funny scene, and, you know, talking about how Lonnie thought on him. He, he, I think he either sold him or he bought peyote off of him. It was one of the two. Then they meet up with Tommy. This is where we get a really good scene of the bodies being displayed. Nice callbacks to Halloween 3 with the masks. You know, the, 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 the couple on the merry-go-round. Marion on the swing. It's pretty brutal. And I actually think, I like Lonnie's reaction to it. Like, it actually seemed genuine. Like, I think that's another thing about this film. There's a lot of things I like, but I really like... The people in this feel like real people. They don't feel like just Hollywood actors just being Hollywood actors. They actually feel like real people who live in, like, a, a small town. And they actually... I can believe they kind of all know each other. I think they do a really good job of pulling that off. So, they meet up... They find Lindsay. Then now we're back at the hospital. This is where Tommy starts rap... rap uh, you know, getting every, you know, ramping the town up to get all angry. I thought this scene was actually really good. Like, you have the, the um, sheriff trying to hold everyone back. Even um, Brackett, um, who, we, who you saw from the first one, Charles Cyphers, who's now a guard, even shows up and is like, evil dies tonight. And he gets everybody to do that. <clears throat> then this is where Lori realizes Michael's alive. She, like, a, some kind of, like, injects herself with some kind of thing. I'm assuming it's, like, like, uh, adrenaline, I'm assuming. But, so I thought that was cool. Then this is also, yeah, where we get the really good scene between her and Tommy. Then, then this is where, you know, obviously now everyone's all angry. The patient, who you saw earlier shows up. I think he probably was just showing up for some help. And I actually really thought they did a really good job of showing how overrun the hospital was. The scenes where everyone's like, where's my son? Can you put my, my, you know, wh whoever in the, in the room? They, they, it really, like, they really did a sh good job of showing the chaos 
the aftermath and it really does feel like it's the same night i think they really did even though this film's obviously three years later technically but yeah i really love it so while this is happening little john and big john are hanging out myers shows up knocks at their door you know in the front um big john confronts him well, goes to the front of the door. No one's there. While little John notices that the back door is open. And he notices the the bloody paw print. I thought his reaction was genuine. Like, that moment of realization is like, dude, this isn't... And when he's, like, telling... Even when he tells uh, Big John, someone's in our house and it's not a kid. Like, th like, that seemed genuine. Like, that, like, when he saw the bloody paw print. And, yeah, we get a gag where, you know, little... Big John grabs, like, a little knife because they're filleting, like, some kind of food. I don't know. And, you know, Little John grabs a big knife. Realistically, Big John should have just had a golf club that he already had. Whatever. It was for a quick gag. It was quick. Then Big John gets killed really brutally. Like, gets stabbed in the armpit. And then Myers, like, squeezes his eyes out. It's really brutal. Like, this movie is fucking violent. Like, bro, if you don't like blood and gore, don't watch this. Because this movie is fucking gory, man. Like, when he, well, Myers squeezes look, Big John's eyes, like, you actually see his eyes come out, like. And then he kills uh, Big John, Little John, like, off screen. I really think they did a good job also of, like, showing it. Because I thought 2018 had maybe, like, I thought they had way too many off screen kills. And, like, some of the off screen, but, like, I would have liked to have seen that. So I thought they did a. A good amount, like an equal amount. Like, you hear some on screen ones and then hear some off screen ones. While this is happening, the town notices that patient, but they think it's Michael, and everyone's in a, in a rage that they're not noticing. Yeah, you could say, oh, and I get some people say this kind of felt like a wrench being thrown in the movie. It just felt random, but it makes sense. Like, everyone's all in a rage because of Michael, and it works, I think. The more I think of it, I'll admit, I was a bit like, what is going on? at first but then it works so everyone's all in a rage they chase this guy karen even tries to help him but he's locked in this room and there's both sides and he's just like noticing there's people trying to break the glass and everyone's trying to come in and he decides to kill himself and this scene is really sad like the way he dies it, and they show the aftermath like oh my god and then the moments they all tommy and all of them realize yo we fucked up and, and, you know, Bracken mentions Michael has made us monsters, and he kind of has. So even when Michael kills, it's calculated. You know, even in this, whereas y'all just, like, just saw it red. And I thought it worked, because while this happened, Michael is over actually at his house just killing and chilling. So Lonnie, Allison, and Car uh, I was Carmen, Cameron show up at the Myers house, because that's where they realize Michael kills, and then he goes home. Lonnie initially goes alone, gets killed off screen. Cameron and um, Allison, they hear, like, something, and they go in. This is where they um, find the bodies of Big John and Little John. Like, there's a picture of them, like, laying together, and Michael displayed them that way, which is pretty funny. Like, there's a lot of that in this, like... And then, um, while this is happening, Cameron finds his dad... And Myers pops out of a closet. Really good shot. Like, I thought that was a, probably one of another, in terms of Myers shots in this film, another really good one. Like, it's all quiet. He just pops out of the closet, stabs Cameron. Allison tries to save him. Like, she tries to shoot him. Michael just takes the gun out of her hand. She tries to stab him. Michael slams her head on the staircase. Pretty, Michael's fucking brutal in this. Throws her on the, the off the stairs, and she ends up breaking her leg, which... The sound of, you don't even see it. You just hear it. It's just, oh my god. Kills, he basically beats Cameron and Death through the staircase. And then snaps his neck. While Allison watches, which is really sad. Like, you know, yeah, he fucked up in the last movie by cheating. But you, he, I really thought they did a good job of trying to redeem Cameron as a character. And you're not even thinking about, this dude's in a skirt the whole time. <laughs> like, I'm not even thinking about that. So I actually like how they made him grow as a character. Myers tries to kill Allison. Karen comes for the save. Takes his mask. We get a kind of a cool chase scene. 
the music's really good. She leads them into a trap with Tommy and um, the town. They you get this scene where it's really quick, but where they beat him up for a bit. Allison, not Allison, Karen stabs him in the back. Seemingly he's dead. You know, they tell, Tommy tells Karen, you know, go, go be with your family. She leaves. And then um, Myers, basically he was playing possum, just immediately kills everybody. He's probably one of my, even though it's really quick flash of the kills, I thought it was still a really good scene. When he just slices Brackett's throat, stabs another dude in the throat. The scene where he slices a dude in his ankle. Oh, God. Stabs a dude through the arm. Then he kills Tommy, um, seemingly, which I, I would have liked to have seen Tommy be in another movie, but at least he tries to redeem himself, even though he fucked up with the other guy. So I thought that scene was really good. You know, there's a scene where Laurie's giving this um, monologue about Myers, which is really good. I thought she does a really good job of being that. And then, oh, another scene that was really good is where Hawkins admits it was his fault because back to the flashback Loomis had Myers dead to rights the cop like beat him with a baton then Loomis had the gun him back basically to back of Myers head and he even Dawkins Hawkins even said I saw I thought I still saw a little boy so he stopped him but then he realized he fucked up so I thought that scene was really good then Myers kills Karen in the end because she goes in the window where they mentioned throughout the film that's the window Myers would stare out of after killing his sister. Kills Karen. We get a quick shot of Lori real. Almost like she's kind of realizing something's wrong. Um, and then the film ends. I thought this was a dope way to end. And um, um, a dark way too. Like Myers almost wins this one. It's a really interesting way to end the film. I'm going to see where I'm at. Yeah, I thought this scene was really good. Like, it's such an interesting way to end the film with Myers, like, winning almost. So, overall, I love this film. I definitely would recommend it if you're a Halloween fan, even just for the Michael stuff. Michael is a fucking monster in this. The way, I like the way they kind of go back to him displaying bodies, because to be honest, that goes back to the first one. Because in a lot of the later ones, they kind of don't. They almost, like, have him just kill you and then walk away. <laughs> Where... No, like, in one, and they did a bit in two, like, Myers would kill you and then display, like, for Lori, but so I thought it was kind of cool in the last two films, like, he's kind of going back to that. And I like the fake out where everyone thinks Myers is going to the hospital, and everyone's saying, oh, he's gonna be coming here, he doesn't end up going there. So, like, they basically wanted, they almost, like, were making the point, Lori, this isn't about you. He's not coming after you. He's just killing indiscriminately. And I think they did a really good job of showing that in this. So, I fucking love it. I am, the music's beautiful. I'll admit, like, there's little things here and there I don't really like, but they're minor. Like, there's only, like, minor criticism. That's why, to the point, I don't really need to point them out. They're not that major. Um, I think they did a really good job of honoring what came before. I think that's a lot of us have been asking about, like, how many franchises just get destroyed. And the fact that it took a franchise like Halloween, which is just a slasher from the 70s, is the one that honors it right. Not something like Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever. Like, it's crazy. You know, I thought Lori was good in this as, like, the Loomis character. This film made me like Allison, you know? I, I've had my criticisms of Allison in the last film. I felt like... She didn't really do a lot. But then it's because, oh, she just, they just didn't have her do a lot. And, and to be fair, it, they wanted to probably focus more on Lori and Michael. Because this is like the return film. They're going to probably, a lot of those films, they're like they're going to focus on the legacy characters more than the newer ones. So that's why it was kind of good to see Lori and Allison and even Karen kind of you know, take the forefront a bit. And Allison's my favorite human character in this film, besides Tommy. Um, I really like her in this. I, the scene where she's like, I'm fucking ready to kill him. Like, you believe it almost. It didn't feel like, oh, um, this just feels fake. Tommy was cool. His scene with Lori was so fucking good. You know, you protected me, now I'm gonna protect you. It just, it just chills. It's such a good line. 
yeah, Tommy ultimately fucks up, but at the end of the day, he tries to redeem himself in the end. I hate that he died. I mean, he clearly died. Michael, like, slammed his head with the, the bat, and you see, like, almost brain matter. So, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I kind of wished he would have maybe made it to ends, but whatever. But I really do want to see what ends does now, because I want to see, like, the aftermath of the town. Like, the scene with the sheriff just sitting on the stairs, like, dude, he lost it. He lost the town. Everyone's lost. So this is a great film. I definitely would recommend one of the better, newer movies. Um, but other than that, guys, I had fun with this one. So this one, I'm going to be watching a lot to come. Tomorrow, like I said, I'm going to be doing an updated ranking. That'll probably be, that'll be my first video. I'll do the Three Days Grace video this week. Sorry, just Halloween Kills and stuff came up. I forgot about it. But yeah. So tomorrow I'll do that um, updated ranking. That will probably come out first. Then I will do my Jet Li's Fearless review tomorrow. That's, I haven't watched that film in years, so that's going to be fun. I want to talk about it again. But other than that, guys, Halloween Kills is great. Uh, I give it a 9 out of 10, 8.5. I definitely would recommend if you're a Halloween fan. E even if there's little things you may not like, Michael's not really. And that's, like, the biggest thing with this movie. So other than that, guys, I'm going to cheers one last time.